Tezos is really coming to a lot of people's prominence and mindset when they are thinking about purchasing NFTs. You know, it saves on gas fees. There are so many eco reasons why this is a great blockchain to be part of. And you know what? It really does encourage artists to have the opportunity to experiment and get brilliant artworks out there as NFTs. So today I'm going to be deep diving with you step by step on how to set up a Tezos wallet. There are many to choose from. There's lots of great options. I'm going to be taking you through the probably the most popular version of it and showing you how to do this so that it is foolproof for you to set up buy some Tez and then be able to look and browse on marketplaces and interact so that you can then purchase those all important NFTs. So are you ready? Are you ready to deep dive into Tezos? I think I am. Let's get to it. Okay guys, so if you are wanting to buy any Tezos NFTs or if you're wanting to trade with Tez, the cryptocurrency, you're going to need to set up a wallet and we're going to go through all of the detailed steps in how to do this. Um, it is relatively simple but there's things that you need to look out for and there's things that you need to be aware of so it's always good to go through this in detail now it all starts with a wallet uh, for anyone who is new to this space um, you will have a wallet that will possibly sit on your desktop or you log into it and that will store your nfts in your crypto now as you can see here the way to do it is to start by opening a wallet. Um, but there are many, many wallets available. I want to just highlight very quick, quickly that if you are going to be operating on the Tezos blockchain um, and interacting on that, you will not be able to use MetaMask. Um, it is the most common Ethereum-based uh, wallet out there, uh, but unfortunately it isn't compatible with Tezos. So we won't be able to utilize that if you've already got one of those set up. You need to now set up a new wallet. And there are loads to choose from. Um, there are lots of software wallets. The most frequently used are listed on the Tezos website. So if you want to make sure that you're opening the right wallet, I definitely recommend going through to uh, the Tezos website and seeing what they recommend. So we've got Kukai, Temple, Umami, and Airgap. Um, and they're all compatible with lots of different um, operating systems as well. Um, and then also we've got a, a, a even more that are used uh, around there but probably the one that I think a lot of people already have is a trust wallet um, so if you do have a trust wallet you can use that um, and also the good news is is that if you are interacting with the Tezos blockchain you can also protect all of your assets using a ledger or a Trezor hardware wallet um, so this is really good to know because if you are new to the space as well anything that sits in a wallet online is essentially a hot wallet and if you want to make sure that you are doubly protecting all of your assets and taking it off any sort of um, opportunity for anyone to get hold of any of those assets via, I don't know, some sort of cyber crime, uh, hacking or things like that, then having something like a ledger or a treasure is that way to do it and it stores it offline and every time you interact you have to plug it in um, and give in certain key, uh, key phrases and things like that so it's all having that extra level of security. Now, today we're going to focus on probably the most popular um, wallet to purchase Tezos uh, with, and that is Kukai. Uh, you can log in using your Facebook, your Twitter, your Reddit, uh, even with Google. And for that reason, it feels like a very accessible wallet to be using. Um, this is quite simple to set up, but we will go through all of the stages. So if you already have a Kukai wallet, you can always go back to this website, you can go and press import wallet um, and, and access it that way. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is creating a new wallet and it will initially take you through to giving you your seed phrase. Now, your seed phrase is super important. It's probably the most important thing when it comes to your wallet because you may have a password that you set up, um, but to, to completely protect all of your assets, the biggest thing that you can do is take note of your seed phrase, okay? And this is gonna be a collection of 12 or even 24 words. And you have to note them down in order. And my suggestion is that you note them down offline, okay? So that is not storing them in a Word document on your computer. Do not put them in any sort of web page or email or anything like that. Why? Cyber attacks, hacking, etc., etc. If they can get through to you, if you click a dodgy link, then they can obviously go through all of your details if they can hack into your system and they will find your seed words. And what does your seed words do? Your seed words 
protect your asset. So this shows that you are the true owner of this wallet. And by putting this in, uh, you will be able to access your wallet. You don't have to do it every time, but it's it happens if you are changing your operating um, equipment. So if you're changing computers, or if you are, uh, if for instance, your something's gone broken um, and you need to go and access your wallet from another location, you'll always be asked your seed word. Never ever give your seed words to anyone, okay? And that's like not even your most trusted friends, not, not anyone that, at all, I would say. What you want to be doing is writing this down somewhere safe, storing it if you have a safe at home if you have um you know a, a special place where you store all of your different um wallet seed phrases keep them there some people even like to fireproof their seed phrase wallets they write them and get them etched on steel uh and why is it why is it that people do this well it's because it's holding such valuable assets so this could be your cryptocurrency this could be your your, your nfts you know this could be your access to the metaverse you need to make sure this is protected, okay? So I'm gonna very quickly hop off, reveal these seed words here, which is what you do, you just hover around that. I'm not gonna do that right now in front of you. Write them down in order and be sure to back it up. Write it down, keep it incredibly safe. That is the most important thing. I'll see you in a jiffy. So once you've finished writing out your seed phrase, you're then gonna be asked to verify your seed, which is just a way of the wallet checking that you've written everything down in the correct order, and they'll just test you through that. And once you've done all of that, you will be able to go to the next stage. So we, as you can see here, the recovery seeds have been verified. That's good from them. So we click on the next button, and then this is your opportunity to set a password. So we'll do that here. So once you've done that and you've written that down, and I suggest you keep your password with your seed phrase, it will actually then relocate you back to importing your wallet. So here you can pick your seed phrase and it will ask you to enter them in order. So that's exactly what we're going to do now. And then I'll be back. And then it will tell you your wallet is created and now it is set up and ready to use. So here's your public um, account address. So the equivalent of this, I would say, is it's like giving someone your bank details. Um, this is not something that necessarily you need to keep secret, but it is something that you need to kind of keep hold of so that you can use that to transact with. And then the next thing you wanna do is open your wallet. And here we go. This is your, your dashboard for Kukai. And actually I love this more than I love MetaMask because it gives you so much more all in one space because on MetaMask, if you're buying NFTs, you then have to log into OpenSea to see what you've got on there. It only really shows you the crypto, et cetera, et cetera. And this is actually much more user friendly. So let's take a little look around. What we've got here is we've got the balance of how much Tezos you've got there. Uh, so you'll always be able to see that amount. Obviously there's nothing in our wallet just yet. I'm just gonna close that one down. It will log all of your activity here. It will show you a very easy button to buy NFTs with. It will also show you up here so that you can remember it. This is going to be your public wallet address, which you can then copy if you need to. If you want to create a QR code for it, you can do this as well. And then if you're wanting to add an account, now you can only do this once you have some money in your account, you'll be able to set up multiple accounts if you need to. And then obviously got your settings button here. Um, and if you need to sign out, you can do that there as well. Now, here's what I think is really interesting. So once you start buying NFTs, it will store it here so you can see it. And actually this is really similar to some of the apps on Ledger to show you how to do that as well so that you can see what's stored where for all of your projects. So it's just useful to see that in here. And obviously we haven't bought any NFTs yet, so we can't do that. But it also takes you through all of the different places in which you actually can buy NFTs and everything else that you can buy with, um, with Tezos, which again, in terms of user friendliness and user experience, I think this is so much better. Um, so what we've got here is all of these different um, websites and uh and places to purchase um lots of different uh, tezos everything from domains through to artwork even use your tezos to to basically go and interact with gap which is fantastic gap threads that's so cool to have a digital experience there um other places that you can buy now fx hash um hen as well hiccup nunked object these are your kind of open sea equivalents within the Tezos blockchain. 
And so that allows you to, to kind of go through all of those and buy the NFTs that you want to go and buy. But the first thing that you have to do before you can even do that, it's just useful that all of them are click throughs from here. I love this setup, this user experience is so much better. Is that you're gonna have to buy your Tezos currency. Buying the minimum amount it's saying to buy is 30 pounds in the UK, which is what we'll do here. And you'll get 19.5 uh, Tezos for that. Um, so if we go through this, what I like about this is that you can actually purchase through MoonPay, which is a really, really simple way of doing things, which is fantastic. So if you want to do this, you just follow the example of adding in your email, using your bank details, transferring the money through MoonPay, and then you can purchase. It's a secure purchase opportunity. Um, the other option is to buy via Coinbase as well. Now, when you go on to Coinbase, so obviously this is a cryptocurrency exchange, so this is an external source from Kukai to purchase this. You would purchase your Tezos here. It gives you all of the information you need. It's the price of per Tez at the moment, um, your market statistics and everything here. And you would buy your Tezos as a one-time purchase, or if you're wanting to do a dollar cost average, you can actually set up um, a recurring amount to uh, repeat your purchase every week or once a month or whatever and then you would uh, you would purchase it here and that is where it's really handy to be able to copy this address and then when you come to send and receive your asset of tezos you'll be able to do that by adding in your wallet address to send it across i think it's a really simple process in which to buy you're able to purchase your tezos directly via moonpay or if you're already signed up to an exchange, you can send that money and that cryptocurrency to this wallet. And then from that, you can go to any of these Tezos based sites and go and purchase NFTs, which is fantastic to be able to do. So if we just log into something like Object, for instance, this is one of the largest NFT marketplaces on Tezos. So this is a great place if you're wanting to buy art, you can see exactly how much each piece of art is worth. So if we look at this one here, and then it says to you buy for Tezos for, for two Tez, and then it will ask you to connect your wallet, okay? And here we have the Kukai wallet. It will get you to connect your Kukai wallet to it, and it will ask for that permission. You'll approve it, and then you sign this, which is a way of it just kind of completing that transaction. And then following on from that point, you should be able to purchase your NFTs. So super simple to do, really simple step-by-step -step guides, really easy to set up one or two or multiple wallets. You just follow the same process. And from that point, if you're wanting to purchase anything on te using Tezos, you are good to go. Well, there we go. A more detailed than normal deep dive into how to set up a Tezos wallet. It's a great blockchain to be interacting on. Low gas fees, great for the environment as well in comparison to other blockchains. And of course, it's got some fantastic artists doing some incredible stuff on there as well. So if you found this video interesting and want to learn more about Tezos, then check out these videos. They're here to help you whether or not you are a creator or an artist thinking about stepping into this blockchain. And why wouldn't you? It really is fantastic. So I hope these help. And until next time, I'll see you then.